Greetings again, inner websticles. I'm Dr. Lexo. And I am Derek the Potato Goblin. And today we're going to demystify Photoshop brushes. A lot of people ask me, and by a lot of people, I mean literally nobody. Hey, Lexo, what Photoshop brushes do you use to make your Vex comic issue two that isn't even out yet look so awesome? Well, I'll tell you. So let's get into it. Photoshop can be really cool for making comic books. If you pay for Photoshop, there's actually a big ass brush set called Kyle something or other. I'll put it in the show notes and you can just download this thing. It's got a ton of different brush preset packs and typically I just look for pencil brushes, which I never use, pen brushes, which is kind of my style, and then inking brushes and you just kind of find the one that works for you. There's really no standard way to do it. It's kind of finding your own style and that's a whole bag of cats we'll get into later. Mainly I use a couple of pen presets from Kyle's Mega Pack. I'm actually not too sure which ones they are because I saved them as new brushes and changed some of the settings for a different look. It only takes a couple of brushes to really get the job done, but it can definitely be a little bit of a quest to find those brushes and see what really works for you. I've seen artists do incredible work with just the default round Photoshop brush, so it really isn't all about the brush. So when I draw Vex, I only use a few brushes. I went into that Kyle's giant Photoshop pack thing. I'll leave it in the video notes. And after messing around with a bunch of different brushes, I finally landed on some pen style brush tips. They're really heavy and dark for the most part, but you can also get these really, really thin lines that can give the art a lot of dynamic. You only use between one and four brushes? Yep, you don't need too much to get the job done. So here I'm just kind of illustrating how I draw a really crappy version of Vex, but even though it's sped up, I think you get the idea of the kind of dynamic that you can get out of a pen style brush. When I first started drawing, it was kind of this mystery to me exactly how people drew and what kind of brushes they used, and it seemed like they were using all these weird looking brushes that I'd never seen before and I didn't know how they work. But Kyle's Mega Pack has a bunch of different pencils and pens and inking brushes and a ton that are made for like traditional painting style stuff. Spitexo! How do you do these cool spatters and textures? Well, that's a good question, Gerald, and I'll show you how to do it right now. In the particular style that I've kind of found that works for my aesthetic in the Vex comic, I use some brushes that look like ink spatters, which is where traditional comic artists would like flick their pens and get the ink to just splatter all over the place and it'd look real cool. But I just use a brush that simulates that. So you can see on the video, I can take different spatter looking brushes and just move them around and add them to the page in whatever way I want. And another quick tip to make your comic book pop off the page and not look so damn one dimensional is go on the interwebs and find some free textures, paint texture, wood grain, whatever you can find that's really going to look good with your image. Slap that baby on a new layer and then change the blending mode to overlay or multiply or whatever looks best. There's a bunch of different blending modes and you can get some really cool effects with it. Then try moving the slider around on the opacity until it looks like it's really blended into the image and looks natural. It's going to give your comic a little bit more depth and just make it look better overall. And in my case, compensates for some of the shitty artwork. And Photoshop's really great when it's not freezing up, making the little beach ball thing show up for like an hour, just not being able to close the program, completely compromising your computer system to where you have to shut the thing down and then you can't even do that you have to like force shut it down and it's a complete pain in the balls and the whole goddamn thing explodes it is okay dr lexo it is only 70 dollars a month and works half the time so to illustrate my usage of different brushes when i'm making vex i'm gonna draw one of my favorite creatures i've ever created the gerbil Arculus. and afterwards we'll probably throw it in the creation machine and see if it actually comes to life because that worked out so well last time so now we're on to the gerbil Arculus drawing he's a beautiful little creature that i've put in the second issue of vex he may or may not haunt your dreams for eternity but we'll find out he's relatively easy to draw he's just a circle with some more circles and some weird little like pork rind looking things for ears. So just imagine you took a Jimmy Dean sausage patty, covered it in petroleum jelly, and then threw it on the floor of a barber shop. And essentially that's what a gerbil Arculus looks like. However, if you ever had the chance to eat a Jimmy Dean sausage biscuit that's been covered in petroleum jelly and then thrown on a barber shop floor and collected all the hair, I would advise against it. Hair gets stuck in your throat and it makes you cough a lot. In fact, that's why my voice is so raspy. I've been eating makeshift gerbil Arculuses for like years. So now we got our drawing of the gerbil Arculus and we're gonna head over to the laboratory and throw it in the creation machine. Oh, I am so I'm excited about these double accolades! Me too, buddy. This definitely isn't gonna go horribly wrong. All right, so here we are again in our illustrious laboratory that's definitely not a green screen. And without further ado, we're gonna get the automated system to throw the gerbil Arculus drawing in the creation machine and bring this baby to life. You ready, Gerald? I am shaking my fans! Wow! Whoa. Look at this little guy. Looks like the creation machine actually worked this time. Well, dang, he looks like a pretty peppy little dude. Well, yes, uh, I think he had some of that sugar that I ate the other night. Oh, uh, yeah, that uh, powdered sugar. Uh, pretty, pretty strong stuff. Look at those weird little noises, Gerald. It's almost like he's trying to say something. I don't know. What do you think he is trying to say? Uh, let's ask the automated system. Hey, uh, computer, 
Can you uh, decipher Gerbilocules? Uh, you got it, Doc. One second. Beep bop ba do dop beep boop. Okay, I got it here. He says his name is Gerbilocules S. Grant. Gerbilocules S. Grant. Well, that sounds kind of familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says that he's in a great war between the Gerbiloculuses and what he refers to as the Fractal Mantoids. Fractal Mantoids? Hmm. That sounds kind of weird. Have you ever heard of that, Gerald? Oh, it does not ring a bell for me. The Gerbiloculus, or I guess Mr. Grant, says that he would like to now sing the song of his people as a display of goodwill towards this dimension. Huh. He wants to do a song. All right. Floor is yours, Gerbiloculus. Take it away. And I'm proud to be a Gerbiloculus Cause I know that I am free Here's the other Gerbiloculus that gave the life So I could steal farmers green beans And I'm proud to be a Gerbiloculus Though I'm riddled with disease Because a Gerbiloculus I'm proud A Gerbiloculus Well, uh, there you have it. Straight from the gerbil Arculus's mouth, I guess. So that, uh, that part about being riddled with disease, is that, like, real, or is that just like a lyric in the song? I thought the girl hose down the containment suits. That's probably a good idea, Gerald. Well, there you have it, folks. We brought a gerbil Arculus into our dimension, and hopefully he doesn't fill our society with disease. Although, I feel like we kind of got that one covered on our own. Anyway, we hope this somehow helped you with your drawing, and we'll catch you on the next episode of How to Draw Badly. See you next time, kids. See you later, butt scratches.